A League of Their Own is a sports period comedy drama that just dropped its first season on Amazon Prime. The show was created by Will Graham and Abby Jacobson from Broad City fame, who also stars as Carson Shaw, one of the main characters of the Rockford Peaches All-American Girls Professional Baseball League team. The story is based on Penny Marshall's 1992 film of the same name, which has a memorable cast including Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, and Madonna. Today we're talking about the pilot of the new show. I feel like we should end this with play ball. This show has a pretty big cast, and I'm mentioning that at the start because you have Abby Jacobson, the Broad City creator. She played Bean in Disenchantment. She's also from a movie called Six Balloons. You have Darcy Carden, known as Janet from The Good Place, also was in Broad City, Bombshell. A lot of funny people. She's the one that plays Greta, right? Yeah, she's the one who plays Greta Gill. And she actually has a uh, past in playing uh, softball, I think, though, and a lot of other sports in high school. So she was the one who was kind of like tutoring all these other people who were coming in to play for the first time. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, you have the big cast. And then in the original movie, also a pretty big cast, also a lot of comedians there. You have Tom Hanks, Rosie O'Donnell, John Lovitz. And you know what this... Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall, exactly. And you know what the movie had that this show doesn't have, though, is a big name star like Madonna. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm not talking about like TikTok grandma Madonna that we get nowadays. I'm talking about the late 80s, early 90s Elvis Madonna. She was such a big casting at the time that the main star of the film, Gina Davis, the yeah. her character Dottie, I think it right. was, that person had been cast to a different person, but she decided to quit. Right after Madonna was because cast. because of the fact because that it was such a big, such a big she name. was such a polarizing figure already back then like she was so famous like the rest of the cast was starstruck in a way but also <laughs> it was like I don't want this to become all about her and Madonna's I like a pretty side like I mean she's she's not the main character in right? the movie like she's I remember like seeing character. that and I was like afterwards finding out that that was Madonna. Because at the time, it was like mid-2000s for me right. when I first watched it. And and I was just surprised that it wasn't more about her because of how famous she was back then, that she was just kind of an add-on. If this show was to incorporate someone like her that would fit that figure, it would be someone like Taylor Swift yeah. or Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Rihanna, Beyonce. However, with Rihanna and Beyonce, race is an issue for the show, yeah. right? right? And so how much of this pilot batter up do we follow Max, the African-American pitcher who tries out for the team, right? Yeah, she's one of the main characters in the episode. She is a pitcher, though, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So you've seen the movie where they did address race subtly. And in this, did they? I think they came at it at a more direct angle, yes, right? Yes, yeah. That and also, like, feminism is a big part of this Sexual show. orientation. Yeah. But I know Max is supposed to be one of the central characters of the show, despite not making the team in the first episode, right? Yeah. Like, they still follow her character, despite this being a league of their own about the, what is it, Rockford Peaches? Mm -hmm. And they just, like, trail off to this other storyline? Yeah, I mean, like, I think she's the only character in the show that we see her parents. Uh-huh. And uh, she, like, is it's kind of taboo. Her parents don't want her to go to try out for the team, but they don't even allow her to try out because, again, she's African-American. And then she, like, kind of proves that she has an arm, but still they're like, no, we don't want you to try out at all. It and in the image. original movie, someone also, like, throws a pitch from the stands or something. Yeah, throws a pitch from the stands, but, again, they're not on the team. So I was like, okay, is, is that supposed to be the character that Max is playing? But okay. I don't think anybody correlates to the same person. Like, the names are not the same as the one from... Yeah, and that was actually my biggest question. I was like, I know that this is called the League of Their Own, but does it take place in the same world? Sort of an alternate timeline to the same world. <laughs> so like an MCU type of thing? <laughs> exactly. So it's like a multiverse. And the third one is coming out next year in phase three of A League of Their Own. No, there actually have been several different A League of Their Own shows. Obviously, you have the 90s spinoff to the movie. Sitcom, yeah. And then you also have like a bunch of reality shows that have come out over the years. Nothing to do with the baseball thing. Also in different countries. But most people think of There's No Crying in Baseball when they think A League of Their Own. And Abby Jacobson, it was one of her favorite movies. And when she was asked if she wanted to do something with it in like 2017, near the end of Broad City's run, she was like, absolutely. So it's been in production for five years. It's been in production for a while. And they shot the pilot before COVID and... Um, also, Abby Jacobson, you know how I was talking about 
the sexual orientation mm-hmm. being a big part of the show. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The it, she's actually engaged to Jody Balfour, who plays uh, Ellen Waverly, President Ellen Waverly, and for all mankind. mankind yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's a very interesting like pairing because they're both in huge shows right now starring as like very strong female leads. Yeah. So it's funny how they're actually married in real life or will be getting married in real life. You want me to jump into the actual plot? Yeah. Uh, the show's been compared to Glow, uh, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling and Orange is the New Black. I have Pitch and then also the way that Carson and Greta's relationship was. It reminded me of Broad City. Pitch ran for one season. I remember it was about a girl whose father had taught her a pitch that no one else could throw. And hence that's how she was able to break into the major leagues. Yep. And people had a real problem with that idea that someone could learn a pitch that no one else knew and that they'd be able to throw it better than anybody else. Yeah. And that's how they break in. Like they didn't have a problem with a girl joining a baseball team. It was more the uh, actual like feasibility of that specific way of joining. Well, the League of Their Own, the movie, it was like historically accurate in the fact that when men went off to war, like absolutely yeah baseball right in the mid to late 40s and then early 50s it was a very popular sport it wasn't until the advent of like televised baseball that kind of killed it Mm -hmm. because there were these towns where where it was played that was really their only sense of actually being able to see baseball games yeah so people immediately flocked to it like in i know in the movie they made it seem as if they had to like sexualize it really hardcore before like men and they would come in and watch the games yeah but that isn't actually accurate it was really popular at the beginning and it only wavered off near the end yeah or the early 50s yeah. both the commissioners in the film and in the tv series talk about how hard it was like they really needed to get tickets that's like a huge thing in the mm-hmm. movie and the tv series the ticket sales yeah exactly because like people aren't going to want to see girls play baseball i think that's like a line said in both the tv series and movie yeah. but it starts off with a reference straight to the film carson she's our main character she's running after a train that she's almost about to miss with her luggage because she's trying to get to Bakersfield for tryouts and then uh, she even runs into some people that she knows. One of my favorite parts in the episode was John. He's played by Neil Casey. It was really fun seeing him show up because I did not expect it. But yeah. Neil, Neil Casey? Yeah. I don't have him written here. He's the guy from uh, The League and College Humor. Okay. You recognize him yes. at least. Yes. Yeah, you Another mean, comedian. Yeah, exactly. And then so Carson, she's trying to get on the train and then I feel like this had to have been like shot for shot from the movie. She like throws her luggage onto the train and then she's able to make it and then the second she gets off we run into joe and greta they are the two other characters her her like friends but also make the team yeah they don't know who she is at this moment and joe is supposed to be the rosie o'donnell uh, character doris from the movie um i didn't feel like her character she's from you yeah she was supposed to be like kind of the lovable douchebag here though (laughs) because of how mean she is i guess kind of found her character a little bit unlikable but you also meet greta she's supposed to be the nice person they help each other get to bakersfield and then finally we see the tryouts and that's where we also meet maxine she's like comes from illinois and she's the only african-american character right. at the tryout she yeah she's the only one that actually like enters the field uh she's with her friend clance and they're both from uh chicago illinois as we learn and then uh, the managers come right up to her and are like look we can't have you here we don't want you playing and then she's like wait like can i at least throw a few just to like show you how good my arm is and they're like no we need you to leave like right now and then out of anger but also to kind of prove that she has a good arm she's from the uh, like in the outfield and then she turns around and she throws the ball and it ends up in the stands mm-hmm kind of like as a fu to them there was an actual baseball player who did that a few years ago like the manager came out to take them out of the game and they turned around so angry and then they threw <laughs> it all the way back over the center field wall yeah but well that that was they were actually on the team though here uh-huh. she yeah here she's like being kicked out and, and, she, and to, you said they were friends with clance right yeah um best well, friends yeah so, and clance is like really into comic books apparently but clance actually makes the married. team though wait what i think so right not, Do you not find not, out who not, makes the yeah. team at the end of the episode? The only people you know who make the team, and it's definitely not Max or Clance, are uh, Carson, Joe, and Greta. That's later on in the episode. Oh, I have the full team here, so I guess I shouldn't ruin any other players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they're all out of hotel. Was that like the big 
cliffhanger is like who's gonna make it or what i yeah kind of i mean the cliffhanger is the fact that you actually see the peaches uniform and the girls on the team like oh, okay. receive them but well, yeah then you would know who was in the team but i guess that that happens later on in the series what happens is is that they're the all the girls are at like a hotel i think it's prepaid just if you automatically like we're trying for tryouts you got like a free room mm -hmm. uh greta and carson are together greta is giving a haircut and we learn a little bit about carson's backstory she's married to someone named charlie uh he's in war very similar to Dottie in the uh, original film main character yeah he's um, an active duty world war ii yeah and greta can tell that there's like how similar sorry is Dottie to carson Carson, like one on one, is it like a ninety percent or fifty percent? I'd say their backstory is similar, but in terms of like actual character, yeah. I'd say that they are completely different. Different personalities. Dottie has a sister named Kit in the original, who also yeah. plays on the team. Right? Yeah, right. And they have a very tenuous relationship. Here, it seems like Carson is basically getting along with everyone. I would say we see Greta can kind of tell that Charlie is keeping some things hidden, not saying everything about her and Charlie's relationship. So what she does is she gets Greta drunk. They go down to the lobby. They start writing a letter to Charlie. We're not sure what it says, but we see them kind of giggling about it. And then they go up to the manager and they're like, we need you to send this to the And closest. the manager, that's not uh, Nick Offerman, right? No, no. It, does he show up in Nick the show? Nick Offerman will be in the show <laughs> at some point, yes. Yeah, no, they go up to the manager and he does play like a funny character. But oh, you mean like, the manager of the hotel? hotel? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah. you meant like one of the coaches managers. Yeah, I know yeah. the hotel and they're like, we need you to send this to the nearest uh, like mailing service. And then he's like, okay, I will. And then Carson wakes up the next day. They have listings as to who made the team. That's where we learned that Carson, Joe and Greta, they all made the team. Is um, Carson supposed to be like the best player out of all? Of them? No, I would. I don't think that. I think that she was probably on the lower list. Is Greta supposed to be? I, I think Greta is supposed to be. The, they, they're saying her up to be that way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Carson learns about the letter and she's like, oh my God, I wrote that. And they go to the manager and, and the manager's like, don't worry, I already sent it. And she's like, no, I need to get that letter back. Even though Greta knows what it says, yeah. she feels like Tr Carson needs to send it just because of like kind of the conversation that they had about her husband. Um, and then all the girls that made the team, they go out for drinks. And this is where Maxine decides to go with Clance to the bar because Clance's husband accidentally spilled the beans to her family about her going to tryouts. So even though Max and Clance are still hanging out despite her not making the team, yeah, making the cut, right? Because because yeah. they're best friends, but she wants to go confront Clance's husband because he wasn't supposed to tell her family about her trying for tryouts because her family didn't want her to try initially. Yeah, and so uh, she kind of confronts him. He apologizes for it, but she does end up causing a scene when she runs into another person uh she knows it was another african-american who was talking about how he actually made the major league so this had to have been after jackie robinson had played yeah uh yeah in mid 40s yeah and she was like i i am way better of a baseball player than you ever are she like breaks a couple glasses and then uh clance kind of calms her down outside and it's like you can't like People in there are mostly white. If they see you doing this, it's not going to, like, represent us well. That sounds like it's right out of the Green Book. <laughs> yeah, and, well, it got even weirder because there is a scene in this where Greta and Carson, like, go to the back of the restaurant or go, like, outside, and then they end up kissing. And, like, you can see that Carson's kind of into it, but Greta was just doing it to kind of prove that uh, Greta, that Carson was bi. Oh, okay. It was so, it was so strange. Yeah. And then Greta goes It's been home. compared to Ryan Murphy's Hollywood because what they did was they made, uh, it's, like, again, an alternate reality. Yeah. But that said, like, so much of the league was actually people who were bi and lesbian, but just it wasn't talked about at right. the time. That they just want to push, it, push the message more in the show and say this is actually how it was. But it was just strange because it was, like, Carson, you already knew that she was married to a guy, so it was weird how they kind of just, it felt like it was shoehorned into it. Okay. But anyways, yeah, Greta goes home with a guy, um, and then Carson ends up meeting Maxine. She actually recognizes her from tryouts, and is like, you have one hell of an arm. And then they all end up getting their uniforms, and that's basically where the episode ends. So what would you give the episode? Because you said that- Here's it, the thing. So I saw the 90s sitcom also. This is a thousand times better What was than the, the 90s sitcom, sitcom like? The sitcom- it was supposed to be like a direct uh, f uh, spinoff of the show. The sitcom like was two? awful. Yeah, what happened was was that they ended up having the same characters, but they recast the continuity. Some of, of the characters are the same, though. Right? Yeah, you do. Or, have, I mean, not just the characters, but the castings. Are yes, the same. you do have the best part was in the '90s sitcom, John Lovitz and Gary Marshall reprising their role for a couple minutes. Uh -huh. That was fun to see, but except for that, the continuity from the um, film to the sitcom is so messed up. And Penny Marshall also directed the first episode, and I think Tom Hanks directed one of the later ones. However, it did only last the first yeah, season. Yeah, they they try. Yeah, the continuity is constant. 
Tom that, Hanks. Though. Recasting Tom Hanks was a huge problem. They also <laughs> try to like they shoehorn in the um the reference to girls don't cry in baseball in the ninety series. Yeah, the whole team says that at one point, and then also, the whole team like together yeah. as if it's like uh, no hearts don't or what was that the uh, full Friday hearts can't lose. Yeah, exactly. Like Tom Hanks' character is like, "What's the number one rule in baseball?" And full everyone hearts turns, can't lose. <laughs> everyone <laughs> turns around and says it. And yeah, and like Kit and Dottie, their relationship is so messed up. Even though you saw it be patched up by the end of the first oh, film, that's interesting. Dottie goes back to the team, even though it was made very clear at the end of the first film that she did not <laughs> want to because she wanted to spend more time with her husband because her husband was discharged from the army but then her husband somehow was like brought back to the army the next year <laughs> they brought him back because they were like well we got to pitch this show but we want to take Dottie out and then the producers were like yeah no 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 no, no. we want the main star back on yeah the team. <laughs> and and i will say this about it uh the similarity between the pilot and this show is the fact that even though they're both comedies none i found funny i found the film like i did laugh a lot on the film i didn't really laugh here at all but i do think that the acting is good does it, it have potential to make you laugh like it was just setting it up maybe the early stages of a like yeah, pilotitis it, it has potential but also just like i said most of the characters are unlikable joe is supposed to be the like i said likable douchebag she just comes across as unlikable also greta like that weird thing that she did with carson and then it, it, it turning out that she was just doing it as like an experiment type thing she kind of just rubbed you the wrong unlikable. way it sounds like yeah carson i mean she's a fine main character but there's just so many things in this show that i feel like the film did better because it was subtle like sure you can make the argument that in the film it's all about feminism misogyny all of that stuff but it does it subtly and it does it in such a way where it's actually fun to watch here it does it does like bring up these important issues but it almost hits you over the head with it it feels like hmm too overbearing. Yeah, I would say. That said, though, like a lot of people who are watching this aren't trying to compare it directly. Like, obviously, yeah. that's there. Yeah. But you watched it back to back almost. That's so true. that, that yeah. almost leads your brain to be like, we have to compare these two. Yeah. But it, you're supposed to be able to like respect both as independent stories almost. In that way, I do think that you would see this show as better. But also, I guess felt like some of the scenes weren't well written and some of the ideas felt half baked. That being said, it is the first episode. So maybe it gets better. The, later on. the only part that concerned me was when I read that it didn't concentrate that much on actual baseball, which that feels like it's taking a lot away from me. Right. I would actually want to see some of the stunts perform. Like one of the big selling points of the original and all the stories behind it is like the characters or every actress wanted to actually do their own stunts. A lot of them actually got hurt during the performing wow. performance of them and like had bruises for months afterwards, but they felt like that camaraderie of working together for it. And then when I read that like Darcy Carden was talking about when they were all forming as a team and working together together and actually learning baseball the worst part was when they introduced the 1940 styles mitts and they replaced <laughs> the gloves that were modern day because then it became like trying to catch with an oven mitt yeah and and i i found that like really intriguing almost <laughs> like oh i want to see that in, in in real life the only and, baseball that you get and they even do a reference to a dotty split catch uh when they're doing tryouts but um, like that you mean yeah. where she like it actually she didn't actually in the film they had her stunt do the split okay. performance but then she went in the split position does uh, that make okay. sense yeah. gina davis because she wasn't able to slide into a split but she was able to still do but it. she was able to yeah. do a split so they had to like do a quick cut right yeah but there. that's the, all the baseball you get you get like about five minutes that when sucks they're, yeah when they're doing <laughs> their tryouts i i as a big baseball fan would have a problem with that but maybe later on in the series as it amps up I, yeah i assume so they're just now getting into the baseball season. and they didn't actually play any games they just had tryouts yeah. right okay so you overall again would give it a i would give it i'd say like a five out of ten and i just can't get it to passing because i can't say that i would really watch the rest of the series so you can't recommend it no a couple interesting facts i said that the co-creator will graham is the one who brought it to jacobson to begin with in 2017 will graham when i first typed his name in google the, f the first thing that pops up is he's the protagonist in a hannibal like that's the name of the hannibal protagonist is will graham, <laughs> will graham not the yeah. same guy <laughs> okay i was gonna say okay. i don't remember him in the tv also series. you were talking about the 93 series the first episode is actually called Dottie's Back. So when yeah. you're talking about how they brought her back and that felt 
And also, Wrong. there was a <laughs> laugh track. The first scene. Oh no! <laughs> the first scene had like them. It's not completely funny, but it did have like kind of the team. They're in the middle of a baseball game. They're cracking jokes, and I was like, "Oh, good. There's no laugh track." And then in the second scene, they're cracking jokes, and suddenly a laugh track shows up, and I was like, "Oh no! It's gonna be 24 minutes of this, and that's what it was." So at least it was the shorter of the two. Yeah, yeah. And this is only eight episodes. This show, um, but you're not willing to look at that. Would you jump to the end to see if they like won the series or whatever? No. Because I really don't care that much. Did I think they, that's the did biggest Did they win problem. the series in the uh, in the movie? No. Well, the thing is, is that Kit gets traded, yeah. and then they face Kit's team, and then Kit wins. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then the funny thing is that you see Kit get traded, but you never see a character come in to replace her. Yeah. It's a trade. Trade means that you flip. It wasn't she wasn't sold to the well, other Well, what team. happened was Dottie was fighting with Kit, and then they're like, okay, we'll trade you. But then it turns out that they didn't want to trade the Peach's like star player. So mm-hmm. then that's why they decided to trade Kit. Yeah, I have a ton of really interesting, funny facts about the film that I just wanted to end this with if we're done. But I first I should go over the reviews that other people have yes. said for the show. First, let's start with the positive. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, an 80% audience score. IGN called it far richer and more realistically crafted story than the original, probably be because more of the sexual orientation yeah. storyline. I have also heard that it uses too much anachronistic dialogue, like the way that they speak to one another is way too 2022 versus the original movie. I actually did notice that. Okay, yeah. so like any, for instance, or yeah, I, I have on? here that like Greta asked Carson at one point, "How is he in the?" sack and then Carson's like that's private information (laughs) okay well I mean I guess that would be eh, I I don't know how old that expression is but yeah so IGN did say a league of their own is one of the best reimaginings of a beloved movie into a series out there and then a mixed positive review is from the ringer it said a league of their own stops just shy of outright fantasy it does however engage in pointed revisionism even as it works to retain the originals upbeat inspirational tone the balancing act can trap the show in a bind of its own design it avoids overt anachronism, the kind of Gen Z slang peppered throughout tongue-in-cheek comedies like Dick- Dickinson and The Great. So it's not as bad as those two when it comes to like 100% <laughs> talking about how lit these things yeah, are. Like that yeah. would have been a but little over the that top. That was the point. That was the point of something like Dickinson. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then on the more negative side, we had 6.5 on IMDb, which it feels like a lot of that is just like one star blasting. And then also the New York Times said it's a beautiful idea to espouse, but one that the show can't quite embody. It does not transcend its artifice and nothing feels true enough to matter. Not phony, just superficial mixed to negative. And that's how I sort of feel about a lot of Ryan Murphy works mm-hmm. when they were talking about it compared to Hollywood. I was like, oh no, maybe it falls into that trend. But do you want to hear some of the movie gold that I was talking about with the uh, trivia to the original movie? Sure, yeah. Okay. So again, the Deborah Winger was the person who dropped out and she had been training for a really long time when she found out that Madonna had been cast because she was like, oh no, this is going to become the next album. <laughs> this musical or something like that and then um other people who were thought of for that main character role of Dottie was Demi Moore at the time but she was pregnant that Uh was who Penny Marshall wanted originally and then Jennifer Jason Lay actually turned it down really she didn't want to be in it yeah and you know who that is right she's been in those Quentin Tarantino movies uh Penny Marshall held baseball tryouts for 2,000 actresses at the time even big stars were there because they couldn't cast them unless they could actually play baseball i think i, I think i heard that yeah because i watched on amazon prime and they have the random facts sometimes no well i'll get i'll give you some more <laughs> what was the last show that we did for the podcast that was baseball oriented was it Derek jeter's the captain yes true or false jane lynch was considered for the role of Do- doris true true which is weird because jane lynch didn't like become famous famous until party down which yeah. was like 22 decades later um Lori petty who played kit this is another true or false was also in Orange is the New Black. This is that's no, 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 yeah, that's okay, true. Yeah, that's true. Um, it, she has a way different haircut. You, mm-hmm. it would be hard to recognize her. It's strange, but she was also, I think, in Point Break in like the nineties. Okay. Um, and she auditioned eight times in order to play Kit. Wow, so she was called true or back. false? Oh, true, true. Yeah, she was called back that amount of times. I guess so. The last one of her auditions was actually at Penny Marshall's place. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, true or false, John Lovitz's role of Ernie Cappadino was written for him, but was cut down as a significant character when filmmakers realized that they only needed his meanest comments and his most obvious punchlines to cause the audience to break. True? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's also true. All right, how about this one, true or false? 
John Lovitz found out that Madonna had checked into a hotel under a pseudonym, and so he registered under his own pseudonym. It was Edna Pua Didu. I want to say true. Yeah, why are you guessing true to all these? The whole point of a true and false is supposed to be <laughs> well, all that Why believable? are they all true? Okay, well, because there was a lot of good facts about the movie. Um, okay, true or false. New York State Trooper David Harding played one of Kit's adult sons in the Hall of Fame scene. Within months of the shooting, he was indicted for falsifying evidence in several cases, including a 1989 multiple murder in Ithaca. This has to be true. It is true. <laughs> True or false, despite being 75 at the time of the film's release, Maybell Blair showed off her arm by throwing a 70-mile-per-hour fastball at the film's premiere. False? God! <laughs> 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 the one that I put in that's false. Okay, true or false, according to Penny Marshall, Hans Zimmer didn't know a thing about baseball. True. I think it has to be in the way that I'm saying it to you because you clearly know the <laughs> answer before I'm even asking the question. Ready? The original cut of the movie was four and a half hours long, so the editor wanted to make a cut one scene. False? No, that's true. Okay, okay yeah. finally. The guy, but you might just be trying to be, like placate me at this point. Um, yeah, how about this one? The bar scene where the girls sneak away at night from town was originally going to be filmed at the Hornet's Nest, a bar restaurant in Evansville, uh, Indiana. The owners of the Hornet's Nest did a spontaneous renovation in preparation for the filming. The producers saw the changes, said they didn't fit, and then they shot it somewhere else. <laughs> Can you imagine? True or false? True? Yes, that's true. <laughs> I love that it's true. I also feel bad for them, but yes. Um, the original line was, there's no crying in the clubhouse. True. False. Okay. No, it was always, it was always, I was going to add that, I was, like Tom I Hanks was Tom like Hanks, yeah, like it, Tom Hanks just said it during a scene and then. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, true or false, coaches used a slip and slide to teach the actresses how to slide. The first three women got concussions, then they decided to change the method. True. True. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, it's got a rich history, and it almost makes me want to see a film based on the making of, or a TV show, like kind of like The Godfather. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? The Offer? The Offer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to see The Offer for A League of Their Own. <laughs> Again, your la your rating for the show was... A five. Was a five. Unfortunately, you can't recommend it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye. Bye.